Hello everyone, welcome again uh, to my account accounting studio and today we're going to take a look at uh, a new portion of topic called provision for unrealized profit. Why provision for unrealized profit? When does it arise? This arises in the consolidated financial statements where trade occurs between say the parent and subsidiary or it could be between the parent and uh, an associate and the reverse and so due to intra-group transactions let's say a parent has sold to a subsidiary the parent will have included a profit on its sales and the profit could be could have been calculated based on the margin or markup depending on the company's policy and this profit will be included in the cost incurred by the subsidiary when purchasing such goods. So, at the end of the period, when some of the goods are still in the subsidiary's store, this means that some of the profits that had been included by the parent and paid up for by the subsidiary will still be included in the store. And that's the provision for unrealized profit. So, the first step to obtain the provision for unrealized profit is to extract the profit on sales made. After extracting the profit, we'll have to know the percentage of goods that are still in inventory. That means if they are in inventory of the subsidiary or of the parent, they are still in the whole group. So, we have to eliminate them. And so, how do you obtain the margin? If the company uses the margin policy, that means profit is usually given as a percentage of sales. So to obtain the profit, you take the profit margin times sales. And the markup, markup means that profit is given as a percentage of cost. So to obtain the profit, you take the profit markup divided by summation of profit markup and 100%. And the, uh, the final result is multiplied by sales. And so, we can take a look at this first example over here. Example 1. Parent P sells goods to subsidiary S at $60,000. At the end of the period, 30% of goods remains in inventory of S. Compute the provision for unrealized profit if P uses A, a profit margin of 20%, a profit markup of 20%. So, we are told that P is a parent and it, it has sold to a subsidiary S. So, the sales figure actually is $60,000. So, if you start with A, a profit margin of 20% was used to set the profit to set the price of the goods and so to obtain the profit profit is equal to 20% of our sales so 20% of $60,000 we get $12,000 this is a total profit but some of the profit will have been realized and some will not have been realized and we seek that which has not been realized we are told that 30% of goods remain in inventory that means 30% of profit is still in inventory and we have to eliminate it so you take 30 percent times twelve thousand dollars and you obtain thirty six hundred dollars now case b a profit markup of twenty percent this time around our profit was based on cost so profit equals to profit markup twenty percent divided by the summation of profit markup which is twenty percent and a hundred percent and our final result is multiplied by sixty thousand dollars and then you obtain $10,000. So this is the profit that was included during the sale. So to obtain provision for analyze the profit as usual, we take 30% of our profit and this is $3,000. Now, in the previous section, we just learned how to compute the profit provision for analyze the profit figure. But now, we have to learn the way forward to include it in the consolidated financial statements. So, 
We look at entries required for PAP, which is provision for analyzing the profit for sales between parent and subsidiary. In the first case, when the parent sells to a subsidiary, in the second case, when the subsidiary sells to parent. If the parent sells to a subsidiary, that means the parent will earn profit. So that provision for analyzing the profit will be in the profit of the parent, income statement of the parent. And we know that an item that enters the income statement will eventually enter the group's retained earnings. So, if you are preparing an income statement, it will be in the statement of profit or loss, SOPL. And if you are preparing a statement of financial position, it will be in the group's retained earnings. Actually, it will have to be deducted. And we know that the group retained earnings is a credit balance. So we'll have to deadly. But for the subsidiary case, the subsidiary will have bought it at your cost plus the profit that the parent had set. So we'll have to eliminate it from the closing inventory of the subsidiary. And so the inventory is an asset. It is a debit side, but we, have, we are eliminating it. So we are crediting inventory. In case the subsidiary sells to parent, the same, the parent will have the goods. So the parent will have the goods. The parent will have incurred extra cost, which is the profit set by the subsidiary, and we'll have to eliminate it as usual in inventory. Because you have to note that when consolidating financial statements, we'll add up inventory of parent and as well as inventory of subsidiary. So inventory will always have to be credited in either cases. But we will have to debit the net assets of a subsidiary. Why do we do this? It's just the same like this one up here. That the, the provision for analyzing the profit and will enter uh, the income statement of the subsidiary. And as a result, it will enter the, the retained earning of the subsidiary. But retained earnings is part of equity. An equity equals to net assets of a subsidiary. So, it will have to be deducted from the net assets of the subsidiary. Right here. Actually, if it actually retained earnings is included inside here. And in, in consolidation, the net assets of the subsidiary are, is what is actually shared. So, it will enter inside here. Okay. Let's now take a look at entries required for PAP for sale between parent and associate. So it, we have the parent, but we have the associate. So if we have the associate and the parent sells to an associate, what happens? If the parent of the group sells to an associate, actually we do not consolidate the parent and the associate. We just take the portion of the profit, share of the profit during the year. And so the parent will deal at the parent itself. So if the parent sells to a sub C, if sells to an associate, that means that share of profit to an associate, or that the parent is the parent will will earn some profit. The parent the parent will earn some profit, and that profit will actually increase the value of investment of a parent in an associate and so we have to deduct it so we subtract investment in the associate by crediting it because an investment in associate is an asset and so it is a debit balance and as usual we'll have to debit the cost of sales or retained earnings in case of the statement of financial position but actually an associate can sell to the parent so if this happens, the parent will actually pay for that good, and if it's pay for the good, the inventory of the parent will have included that profit, which is unrealized, and so we'll have to subtract it from inventory, and so credit inventory. And at the same time, we'll have to debit the share of associate's profit. No, not that the associate has sold to a parent, right? Yes, the associate has sold to a parent, so I have to debit the share of associate's profit, like this one. So, thank you, and until next time.